Hello everyone. Today I'm gonna introduce a new tool in a QGIS environment. It is called Lagriso, and it's a tool bag for the automatic extraction of grid and slope units for landslide research, which is an application to NG Province, South Korea. This is Omar Al Thwaini. I have a bachelor and master degree in civil engineering and PhD in geomatics engineering. First of all, we will introduce the mapping units in of natural hazards and specifically in the landslide research. And what is the main uh, slope and uh, grid units uh, specifications? And also, we will take an overview about the like Griso uh, uh, tool bag uh, and then we will explain the process of the structure of this tool bag and uh, how to use it in, in general in the following video we will explain more in details about the application step by step and then we will summarize this uh, application about uh, how it's how much is efficient and how much it's make the researcher work much easier most of the uh, landslide research specifically that is focused on the uh, prediction mapping which is new need to be uh, uh, implemented by uh, machine learning using a data prepared in gis environment so the grid unit which is the most common way that the represent by the pixels it's the uh, uh, widely applied actually in this research however there is some limitations when it comes to the landslides so the slope unit itself it represent the real feature of this landslide because the landslide happen on the slope and we need to simulate the real shape of the stop and that's why we move to some applications using the slope units which it will be introduced now and how much is efficient compared to the grid unit so when we start the processing with the machine learning we need to have a binary uh, training data which is represent value of landslides location and the free landslides location which we call the safe areas so how to identify those two locations based on the uh, the literature on the concepts so the tool will also serve to find those uh, zeros and uh, by uh, some assumptions and the the tool is friendly and easy to implement especially it's in a QGIS and open source uh, software which is uh, uh, required no programming skills and we just need to provide the inputs that we will explain and it's run in uh, a graphical modeler so that's mean uh, anyone can uh, edit and modify those uh, modules based on the needs so here uh, so far we implement the uh, default settings for the grid and for the slope unit extraction so in case you have some special special or some specifications you want to apply you can extend this easier and that uh, we say that this tool is a uh, version 2 and it's available freely from the github website so first of all susceptibility mapping which is usually have uh, uh, four major uh, process firstly it's the data input which is represented by the uh, independence which represent the conditioning factors or the priority uh, factors like the uh, rainfall the land uses and uh, 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 topographical uh, maps like the elevation and aspect and slope so on and the dependent which is represent the location of the incidents of the landslides but usually it's a point feature or polygon and then we have the analysis model and the tools or the function the algorithm sorry and then the present the results and do the validation so 
the most of that time we have some issue with the uh, accuracy so the accuracy will be enhanced in case that you have the real or the most uh, 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 logical representing mapping unit and then also you have uh, to know exactly where to select the freelance slides area because it's also part of the training data and then uh, you need to study the uh, sampling strategies whether you are taking all the data or you separate it based on uh, randomly or some special or uh, temporal uh, clustering and uh, and we know that most of the preparation for this uh, data entry especially it's uh, hectic and it's time uh, consuming and that's why in uh, uh, in this research we are uh, providing the tool that it's make the things easier and also less uh, risky uh, in taking in mind the uncertainty that might highlight it during the processing step so the mapping unit it can be uh, explained as it's the smallest uh, uh, non-separable uh, spatial entity within the hazard assessment maps and the data extraction is based on this special units uh, the accuracy of the phenomena which is uh, rely uh, mostly on this mapping unit so the most common mapping unit that are available in the literature to deal with the landslide research are the grid cells or we call the grid units slope units aspect units and the unique condition and the topographic units Take in mind that those mapping units should be as much as possible uh, homogeneous. So here, if we want to give uh, 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 some uh, conversion with the most common mapping units, which is the slope, taking the complexity, the grid unit is much more simple than the slope units because it's just a uniform uh, shape of uh, uh, squares while the slope units represent the shape of the slope as you see on the, uh, the figures below so on the left side it's those kind of uh, uh, n uniform non-uniform uh, shapes which represent the slopes on the right side you can see the uh, squares uh, represent by the uh, grid unit also the structure as we said it's a regular and the slope units are irregular uh, and what about the special uh, characteristics and special mechanism of the landslides for the slope units it's maintained it while we lost this kind of uh, uh, physical mechanisms due to the squares because uh, as you said the landslides happen in a slope shape not in the grid shape while the geomorphological and the landslide special uh, characteristics also of the valley will be maintained with the slope unit so in here also we want just to quickly say what's the difference between the slope unit and the aspect unit which is some people get confused the slope unit is the catchment basin it's a hydrological analysis so uh, there it will be crest line and the valley and the valley line so this between these two it will be the, uh, uh, the 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 slope shape as in the see in the uh, yeah on this uh, small uh, and, uh, shape here so you can see the slope units right and left it's just in the uh, uh, divided by the uh, rigid rigid line and then we get two slopes for each aspect on the uh, sorry on the face right on the face and the left on the valley uh, however in the aspect if you see here the red side which is if we have one aspect and uh, divided actually the aspect as you know it's divided uh, usually on the uh, eight or nine uh, uh, aspects or directions so if we have something in the northeast and there will be like a few degrees difference because it's for example from north from zero to uh, 45 we have for example uh, uh, too many uh, uh, directions within zero to five or five to six or to ten those small changes in the aspect will not be reflected in the slope unit in the aspect unit however it can be easily detected by the slope unit and then you can come to the point that the slope unit can be divided as much as there will be a difference in the uh, uh, catchment area 
but in the aspect it we are limited within the angles that it is mostly divided by uh, nine uh, uh, directions or the uh, nine aspects so in here it's an overview about the uh, platform of the uh, uh, the tool so the QGIS as you know it's a free and open source GIS application for viewing and editing and presenting the uh, geospatial data our current tool work on the uh, tested actually on the version of 3.4 3.6 3 3.8 and it's work on the uh, Windows uh, and uh, actually we didn't try it on the Mac but it, there will be no issues since it's working on the both uh, 64 and 32 bits uh, and uh, in here as you see that the uh, models on the right side and here some snapshots from the uh, model uh, body so we uh, just quickly mentioned the input of this model is needed just the landslides locations and the digital elevation model so the landslide location represented by the point and the digital elevation model raster that's all but if you have the polygons of the landslides it will be also adding more uh, value to the analysis however it's not needed so i think this is the most basic uh, in input for uh, uh, open source uh, software uh, we worth to mention that there will be there are uh, actually uh, some soft tools can run the uh, slope unit however they are not working on the windows or some of them need some uh, uh, programming uh, skills or some they are uh, need to work on the different operation operating system like linux so but in here we are working just on the windows even with the offline and with the symbol entry uh, here is the structure of the grid unit which is uh, different in some parts for the slope unit so in here for the input as we mentioned the landslide inventory which I will be later uh, uh, try to get the uh, clean and arrange actually the file with the output so and then the if we need to have the study area and let's say that you still your study area you didn't mention exactly what's the study area that you are working on uh, the tool also will uh, extract the study area of you based on the basin so it will be the biggest basin that are surrounding this, the landslide locations it will be considered your study area and then uh, based on this flow we will uh, assume some assumption about the free landslides area which is in here we assume it's uh, the first quartile of uh, uh, landslides event for example if the landslides happen started from the 30 degree and above or 15 and above of the slope value we are taking the minimum occurrence the area that it happened the minimum occurrence of this landslides and we also multiply it by reduction factor so we will try to take the slope values within like 0 to 5 or it's depend on your the uh, the first quartile of the landslide occurrence so we will try to separate as much as possible between the landslide and non-slide areas also about the number if you also you are free here to assume equal amount of points for the slow uh, landslide and non-slide areas uh, uh, location sorry or you can increase it to double or whatever you want but in in literature usually it's uh, as uh, if, if it's the if the quantity is equal for the uh, zero and one it will be much safe and in the slope uh, sides as you see here the in the data entry is the same there's no issue but here we have some uh, advanced analysis because uh, we need to deal with the hydrological process so here the the uh, the tool will take the minimum area for the uh, uh, and maximum of the basins the catchment areas and then we assume that we are taking the average in, in in different tools it run the iteration to give you the most homogeneous area for the catchment but in here for us we are assuming the average uh, area of the basin that is the difference between this tool and the other tools so here you will have uh, to in insert only the the average 
area of uh, the patients, which is will be provided also uh, one, uh, during uh, the uh, the tool run. You will get it as a separate window, and you can just select the value based on the output, and you just insert it back. At the end, you will have to insert your conditioning factors. So in this tool, to, uh, currently we added 15 uh, uh, slot for you because most as we saw that most of the number of the conditioning factors between 5 to 10 to 20 to, to, to 15 so we added 15 as a maximum if you want to increase it also it's easy to update it and also or if you have less than 15 we produced one free raster uh, which we call it no value raster you can just insert it in case of you have missing if you have just nine you can just add six from this non-value uh, raster, which also will be provided with the run. And here, as you see the run, the difference between the slope unit and the uh, grid unit, as you see every point now represented by one uh, slope, while on the right side represented by just one pixel, if we are dealing with the points, as we, as we said. Here is the, uh, the final output on the uh, uh, if you see that because you have different colors so this is represent the training and the testing also and during the model you are giving the ratio how much you want the training and testing so here we are applying uh, 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 the output that will be uh, contain training data 0 and 1 testing data 0 and 1 and all of them will be exported in CSV file that will be taking the categorical data as we mentioned, the categorical data will take the, the the mode or the most frequent value, and for the continuous, it will take the mean in case of the conditioning factors. And this is how it's recommended by the literature. So in the end, you will have the output as a CSV, so it's ready to be taken now into uh, R or into Python or to just to continue with the uh, susceptibility mapping. So to sum up, uh, in this model that, that we mentioned that this tool is freely available and it's easy to be used because the data entry is, you need just to provide the dem and the landslide inventory and then it will produce the uh, with the few assumptions that it, you will be guided by the tool to give the uh, 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 free landslides uh, locations and also the amount of the uh, training uh, data as a ratio and also the amount of the uh, free uh, landslide uh, uh, locations, which also will be uh, guided. And then as uh, the grid unit, if you are just, if you like to use the grid unit, which is, it can be used for different applications, not only for the landslide. Landslide, you need to have the slope unit, but the slope unit cannot be applied for another kind of uh, uh, natural hazards. But the grid unit, can be applied in too many different applications because it's again it's just the pixels and deal with the uh, uh, with the other conditioning factors so if you are working on the flooding if you're working on the sinks holes it can be used uh, within the grid units so the tool working offline fully up to, uh, customized and then uh, it will it's now available on the github so it's easy to to be downloaded and start to apply it and the next videos i will try to give more details on running the tool from a to z and here you will notice the the model the data and then you have the the tutorial about how to start the model and copy the uh, library and then process the uh, grid unit and then you check your output also you process the uh, slope units and also you can see the results and how is the, the expected uh, outcomes for each uh, tool at the end i would like to invite you uh, to subscribe uh, or to uh, sign up with the Scientist Adoption Academy. It's a free online platform for research collaboration. Thank you very much. And this is Omar Al-Tawaini and have a good day.